reason I started this channel was to help students who didn't have a teacher in front of them in the classroom. And if that's you, then I'm really sorry. You could be in a situation where you can't currently make it into school because of health issues, or you've got a cover teacher in school, or you don't feel like you can learn in the class that you're in. So if that's you, then this is what you can do to study for your exams on your own. Firstly, do not freak out. I know me telling you not to freak out is like the least useful thing in the world to stop you freaking out, but you can do this. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna have to put more effort in than other people in a different situation. But I 100% believe that you can do this. Um, I'm gonna be here with you every single step of the way, providing as much um, guidance and support as I can. So the first thing you have to do is have faith in yourself. You have to believe that you can do this. The second thing you need to do is to get familiar with a load of really long and boring teachery documents. That is the specification. Um, this tells you what the examiners think that you should know. Um, and most of these are designed only to be read by um, teachers. I've done ones for science and maths in kind of like a more friendly way laid it out. You can download those from my website. But if you're studying for exams where I haven't done that already for you, then you're going to have to delve deep into the exam board's um, website and find the specification. And you can go through these and use these as checklists because this is what the examiners think a teacher has been teaching you and if you're having to teach it yourself you need to make sure that you're hitting everything that the examiners think you should know. Once you've worked out what you should know we need to work out how you're going to know it. This is where um, like loaded YouTube videos, textbooks and study guides are going to come in. So get your hands on as many as you can, as many as you can afford. Even if they're slightly older, even if they're for a slightly different specification so you have to pick them up second hand these are still going to be good because the basic knowledge of stuff doesn't change the order is going to change around and um, the style of questions going to change around but the basic knowledge doesn't change and then use your checklist and use your videos or your textbooks and make notes based on the checklist you may have to flick through a few pages in the um, textbooks, you may have to skip a few bits in the videos if the video that you found doesn't exactly match up with what um, the specification tells you you need to know. But use the specification as your guide, find a statement, go and look it up in the textbook and make notes from it. This is how you're going to get the majority of your core knowledge. Don't just keep going on and on and on and on and on. Occasionally stop and go backwards. So go back to the specification again because this is going to be your core document. Go back to the specification and say okay I made notes on that last week. Do I understand it or do I not understand it? Do I need to say that it's done or do I need to flag that for going over again at a later point? Constantly be going over and reassessing what you know and what you don't know. This will make sure that by the time you get to the end you've gone over stuff several times and there's no big gaps in your knowledge. And then the last thing is that once you've got all your core knowledge assembled is you need to practice. Practice, 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 practice. As much practice as you can. Whether that's um, the videos that have questions in, whether it's questions from the textbook, whether you can download um, past papers or example papers from the exam board website. Do as much practice as you can. Because this is going to work out whether the knowledge that you've written down, the stuff that you've made notes from, has actually gone into your head, where it's actually become like a memory. Once you've practiced, assess what you've done, like I did that question good I can now say I'm confident in this topic I didn't do that question very well I need to go over that topic again so you're constantly like working out what you've done marking what you've done seeing where you need to improve on now this is going to be hard work I'm not going to lie to you you're you're in a tricky situation you're not as lucky as everyone else who's got to go to school and have a fantastic experience and have a fantastic teacher and I'm really really sorry that for whatever reason it is that you're not having this experience and I know it's going to be hard but I believe you can do it. It is perfectly achievable to get good grades if you think logically, if you think sensibly about this, if you approach this with a calm head and a positive attitude. 
Um, so I know things are tough for you at the moment um, and I'm going to be here to support you as much as I can the whole way through this. So if you have any questions, if you're not sure about anything, please, please, please leave me a comment down below and I'll do my very, very best to help you out. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. <laughs>